Combat ready. In the air. And on the ground. Airborne. Air mobile. Mechanized. Foot soldier. Men of the 8th Infantry Division. The Pathfinders. On guard in West Germany to discourage communist aggression. The 8th Division won its combat laurels in World War II. It played an important role in the liberation of France. Its first major task was to free the port city of Brest, held by several German divisions. The Nazis were holed up in bunkers like these, where they put up a stubborn resistance. Finally, in September 1944, the besieged Germans surrendered, 50,000 of them. Then the 8th was moved across France to the tiny country of Luxembourg. Its mission was to launch an attack on the German border fortifications known as the West Wall. Luxembourg is well remembered by the Pathfinders. Some of their hardest fighting took place there. During the Battle of the Bulge, the division earned fresh laurels by holding its ground during the massive German counterattack. When the enemy drive collapsed, the Pathfinders moved swiftly to the offensive. Sometimes desperate Nazi resistance slowed them down. There were casualties, but the advance never stopped. Giant tanks and armored vehicles swept away obstacles. Enemy defenses were pulverized. The pathfinders poured across northern Germany in a roaring avalanche of wheels and tank treads, leaving behind a grim litter of destroyed enemy tanks and vast hordes of prisoners. An incredible total of over 300,000. It wasn't long afterward, early in May 1945, that the men of the 8th Infantry Division met the men of the Red Army at the Elba River. The Pathfinders had played a vital role in bringing the European war to an end and were much honored for it. Among their awards were three medals of honor and five distinguished unit citations. The Pathfinder Division went home, but in 1956 it was back in Germany, this time as part of the NATO team, forming a defensive bulwark against aggression from the east. The bulk of the 8th Division is located west of the Rhine River in the rhineland Pfalz area. A region famous for its scenery and wines. Its cathedrals, hundreds of years old. Its ancient castles, legendary since medieval times. There's a dreamy tranquility to the scenery around Bad Kreuznach, headquarters town of the division, where the Nye River gently flows. A quiet restfulness reflected by the unique bridge houses that span the Nye. But there is nothing ancient or restful about the 8th's equipment or its firepower. Or the intensive training its men get. Indeed, in one respect, the 8th is unique among all the United States Army's infantry divisions. 
Its first brigade is completely airborne, besides being mechanized. The brigade also has capabilities for a variety of airdrops and for air landing heavy equipment. All of its service and support troops, whether supply, transport, medic, or engineers. Signal or maintenance men are airborne trained. The division's aerial strength is augmented by its cavalry squadron, which can supply heliborne troops for air assault. The 8th also has a command air section attached to division headquarters. The versatile Huey is much in use for courier and liaison missions. Despite its impressive air capabilities, the 8th retains its infantry mission. When attacked, destroy the enemy on the ground, seize his terrain, and hold it. It is still the foot soldier who faces the ultimate moment of truth when he closes with the enemy on the battlefield. The Pathfinder Rifleman, however, has much more going for him than did his predecessors in World War II. Firepower is incredibly greater in individual arms In artillery too, 8-inch self-propelled howitzers and 155-millimeter howitzers are an organic part of the division. Armor is abundant. Today's mechanized infantry division is almost as tank-heavy as an armored division. Operating this massive, complex equipment requires skill and experience. To achieve them, the Pathfinders train the year-round. Every soldier is pushed hard to achieve maximum efficiency. The emphasis is on unit training, fire teams, and rifle squads. The ideal held up to the infantryman is to fight like foot cavalry, a phrase made famous by Stonewall Jackson in the Civil War. Training phases into maneuvers with larger units of battalion and brigade size. These maneuvers are known as operational readiness tests. 31 helmet, this is control, move out now. Large-scale actions like these give commanders a chance to develop their skill in tactical control. Their effectiveness is carefully studied and evaluated. All attack elements are given heavy fire support by 4.2-inch mortars and division artillery. All the big guns are self-propelled and highly mobile. The batteries are trained in hip shoots, sudden orders to leave the road and take up firing positions. Paratroopers hit the silk as part of the operational readiness test. The 8th Division's airborne troops have participated in NATO maneuvers all over Europe. Once on the ground, the troopers hurry to link up with mechanized elements. Umpires are everywhere, keeping a sharp eye on all phases of the maneuver. Heliborn troops join the exercise. The conspicuous success of air mobility operations in Vietnam has established the helicopter as a combat vehicle. The tactics of air assault are now part of every U.S. Army division's methods of operations. Training in air assault is rigorous. Speed and shock effect are of the essence. So are the elements of timing and coordination.
Specialist troops of the Division Support Command also go into the field during operational readiness tests. This experience is indispensable in developing the skill and speed required of communications men. 2-0 and 7-0, combo check, over. Zero, this is 2-0. I read you Lima Charlie, over. 2-0 to 7-0, hear you saying, out. The same holds true for the engineers, who must learn to handle their complicated equipment under field conditions. Here an armored vehicle launched bridge is put into position. Devices like this help enormously to increase mobility on difficult terrain, mobility that can be decisive in a war of movement. For the medics too, maneuvers are a test of speedy movement as well as medical skill. The transportation battalion is out in full force So are the supply troops, hurrying along the hundreds of items that keep the combat troops operational. These rations were airdropped. All administrative and headquarters personnel, including military police, become accustomed to working under the pressures and inconveniences of the field. Maintenance men go full blast to recover disabled vehicles and quickly put them back in operational shape. Each operational readiness test is carefully critiqued for the benefit of its participants. Unrestricted readiness test. I would first of all like to cover the good points. I felt that one of the best points during the entire morning's activities involved the esprit and the enthusiasm of the troops. For the combat arms of infantry and armor, the high point of training is a qualification test given annually. The infantry test is known as MISPIC, for Mechanized Infantry Squad Proficiency Course. It consists of typical combat problems in which the squad is graded for alertness, aggressiveness, and its ability to work as a team. Bravo Tilly, move out! Let's go! Bravo Tilly! Pick up that boy of fire! Let's go! Move out! Keep moving! Get on line! Get on line! Let's go! Move on! Let's go! Let's go! Get it! Get it! Get out! Let's go! The commandability of the non-commissioned officer in charge of the squad is of critical importance to the success of the test. Qualification test for tank men takes place at Grafenbeer, West Germany's largest maneuver training area. The tank crew qualification course requires the crew to engage in several firefights. Since live ammunition will be fired, a range officer goes along with each tank to make sure that strict safety precautions are followed. Crews are rated on their swiftness of response, accuracy of fire, and the quality of the tank commander's leadership. Fire! Hit fire! The crew's performance is graded by an assistant instructor. A target simulating enemy personnel calls for machine gun fire. The men who handle the big artillery pieces must also pass an annual qualification test. Observer is graded on his skill and judgment. 7 0, this is 2 0, fire mission over. 7 0, fire mission out. 
Brown, target Bravo Golf, 5014, direction 2350, over. The personnel of the Fire Direction Center are tested for speed and accuracy as they plot the fire mission. Check. Reflection 3140, quadrant 474. Check. Deflection 3140, quadrant 474. The heavy mortar crews also go through qualification tests. Good teamwork is of the highest importance between members of the crew and between the crew and its commanding officer. Charge! One one and one eight. Elevation! Zero nine hundred. Occasionally, the testing is of new equipment, rather than men. Here, a modified version of the M113, one of the standard armored personnel carriers, is undergoing a trial run. Its modifications, based on lessons learned in Vietnam, include belly armor and firing ports on both sides of the M113. This allows riflemen to return enemy fire without leaving the protection of the vehicle. The vast extent of mechanization in the division places great responsibility on the maintenance battalion. Its technicians put in long hours to keep equipment combat ready. Unglamorous work, but it is appreciated by the combat troops. They know the maintenance mechanics will, if necessary, move right onto the battlefield to service their war machines. Many men come to the battalion fresh from mechanics schools. Others, without formal training, are assigned because they have shown mechanical aptitude. All develop expertise under the watchful eyes and expert guidance of experienced cadre men who are eager to pass on their knowledge. Controlling the myriad spare parts that must be stocked and issued is a tremendous problem in logistics. The division has automatic data processing equipment, which is used extensively to keep track of the flow of spare parts, many thousands in number. The Airborne Brigade has special maintenance requirements, parachute packers on whose skill the lives of their airborne comrades depend, their own lives as well, for these men are all qualified jumpers. No less vital is the work of specialists who repair the chutes. These rugged paratroopers can make a housewife envious of their handiness with machine-operated needle and thread. The airborne maintenance people also operate this drying tower. Parachutes must be clean as well as dry. Seasoned non-coms check the rigger's work. Check your canopy leases. Check your quick release box. Good for mud also. Brief. Check the sow. See your mud here. Brush good here. Check the back of your back back here. Okay. The mud here. Hang on a second. Check all hardwood on the run for mud. The division's airborne requirements have resulted in the only airborne school in the United States Army Europe. It trains volunteers to be combat paratroopers in a course modeled on the famous jump school at Fort Benning, Georgia. Get ready! This experienced jump master teaches the skills of his specialty to qualified paratroopers who aspire to this highly responsible job. Inboard personnel, stand! 
Other courses teach methods of aerial delivery of equipment and supplies. For air landings, vehicles must be securely lashed down to prevent movement in flight. Another course teaches the technique of rigging heavy equipment for an air drop. For example, a 105 millimeter howitzer. Among the division schools for ground troops, its NCO Academy is considered outstanding. The school's goal is to develop potential non-commissioned officers. It stresses technical skills like map reading and compass navigation, skills that small unit leaders must know in order to do their job effectively. A terrain model is a valuable training aid in teaching tactics and leadership. Frequent field patrols provide plenty of practical training. Each student gets a chance to assume the role of patrol leader Preparations for the patrol exercise are made in deadly earnest. Camouflage is put on with painstaking care. The patrolling course given at the NCO Academy is adapted from the long-range reconnaissance patrol schools developed with great success in Vietnam. It teaches how to infiltrate enemy territory silently to gain information engage in sabotage, or lay ambushes for the enemy. The role of the enemy is played by other Pathfinder soldiers. The patrol leader orders his men to attack in order to exploit the advantage gained by surprise. The firefight is brief and one-sided. The enemy is wiped out. An instructor follows the entire action carefully, grading the patrol leader and the other students. A critique follows immediately, while the events of the patrol are still fresh in everyone's mind. But life for the 8th Division soldier is not just a succession of training days. A wide-ranging program of sports and recreation is vigorously uh, er, pushed. This lively scuffling is not only good exercise, it stimulates the competitive spirit as well. This competitive spirit is further sharpened by the Pathfinder's advanced marksmanship unit. Its pistol and rifle teams have won dozens of prizes in competition throughout the U.S. Army Europe. The sport of free-fall parachuting is one of the most important activities in the 8th Division's community relations program with local German citizenry. It is, obviously, especially popular with children. These fascinated youngsters are members of a local Boy Scout troop that includes American as well as German boys.
they consider the parachutists and the 8th Division to be absolutely wunderbar. A sports parachute club is open to all pathfinders. It gives a monthly course to newcomers on the fundamentals of free fall parachuting. The technique of delaying the opening of the parachute is called halo, meaning high altitude jump, low altitude opening. From the 8th Division comes the U.S. Army Europe's competitive parachute team. Its skilled jumpers have won first place honors in international competition in Germany, England, and Belgium. In the assembly of the weapon... The 8th Infantry Division's role as part of NATO causes training to take on an international dimension. Pathfinders give instruction to their NATO allies and vice versa. After you have pulled back on the operating right handle and the boat is to the rear, you check in the chamber. You'll close the, the idea is to have allied soldiers familiarize themselves as much as possible with one another's weapons. Here, soldiers of the British Army of the Rhine are receiving training and firing the U.S. Army's M60 machine gun. Safety? Yeah. Make sure that the handle is down so that you can fire. Thus, as welcome guests of the Allied nation of West Germany, the 8th Division trains diligently day after day, determined to keep its combat readiness razor sharp proud of its record of victory in battle. Confident that its formidable firepower and mobility will give pause to any nation contemplating aggression. Hopeful that its presence in Europe as part of the NATO shield will ensure peace.